This is Rob Temmer for ID Boxing. Delighted to be joined by David Higgins. It's the morning or the afternoon after the night before here in Manchester. David, how are you? Yeah, feeling pretty okay. You know, the calm after the storm. Um, just processing everything that's gone on. Um, bonding as a team, licking some wounds, being philosophical as you do. Let's start with last night, uh, Joe Joyce, 11th round stoppage win over your man, Joseph Parker. First and foremost, what a brilliant fight. I mean, that's, uh, I think the word brutal is thrown around a lot in this sport, but that was a brutal heavyweight contest. Yeah, that, that fight was gladiatorial. Like, and I've been to a lot of them, but there were many points that I was wincing, you know, wanted to look away. Um, it was gladiatorial, and I think... A lot of people, if you brought someone into that event that had never been to boxing before, they'd be pretty awestruck by how combative it was. A lot of the talk going into this fight was around, you know, Joe didn't need to take this fight. Mm -hmm. Both Joes didn't need to necessarily take this fight. Now the dust has settled. Any regrets over stepping in there with Joe Joyce? Zero regrets. Um, if you're going to devote your early part of your life to being a heavyweight boxer your your goal should be to be world champion otherwise why are you doing it and you know trying to win the heavyweight world title in boxing is like trying to climb mount everest before modern equipment it's hard hardly anyone does it there's a lot of risks and pitfalls um but you know that's why you're in the game and so Parker had a choice to pad his record against journeymen or bums or take easier fights or go for the doctor, go for the prize, go for the world title and get a better payday. So what Joseph Parker did, he chose the risky option to go straight, try get back to mandatory and, and the bigger payday, but with risk. And I think that's worthy of respect. And I think if every boxer had that mindset every card would be a cracker and it would really shake up the rankings and you'd have a proper top 10 of the actual top 10 instead of the politically voodooed top 10. You know what I mean? Um, so I, we have no regrets and that mindset will be with Joseph for his career. Test yourself. What's wrong with testing yourself? Joseph Parker tested himself against a guy that was formidable and proved to be a brick wall, a moving brick wall. And he came up short. He gave it his best shot. And, and he went for the title and he got a good payday. And I think a lot of people that really understand the sport will, will respect that. And I don't think Joseph will have lost many fans out of that at all. It's, of course, not the first time we've seen that in Joe's career either. He, of course, lost his heavyweight title to Anthony Joshua. His next fight was another high-risk fight against Dillian White. Was that something that, you know, you'd had a conversation early in his career? Mm -hmm. Look, we're going to go for the big fights, we're going to take the big risks, or was it just kind of a case-by-case -case basis? No, it was, it was the philosophy from the beginning that we'll be hungry, take risk early. When he did win the heavyweight, WBO heavyweight world title against Andy Ruiz, he was the fourth I think, youngest in history to win it. And it was just take the opportunity. Then when Joshua came, took the opportunity. Because if you don't take the opportunity, you might never get the opportunity again. You might lose to a bum or a journeyman. You might get an injury. When the opportunity comes, you take it. You, yeah, you risk losing. And then you take the opportunity again. And, um, you know, guys, there's a reason why guys like Derek Chisora can still pull a seven-figure seven payday similar you know and are respected um and he's got a name he's got profile around the world fans love him because he's taken opportunities and he's taken risk um and then you get other boxers that treat it like a game of thrones and voodoo and try plot the perfect course and take 15 years and by the end of their career they haven't fought the big names it passes him by i think when joseph parker looks back on his career he'll be able to say that he took all comers and against some he won, against some he came up short, but he tested himself. He's already had the world title once. Hopefully he has it again. He, he's still only 30 and there's a lot to learn from last night. One of the other things that was said before the fight last night, as well as being a 50-50 fight and a risk for both fighters, was that it was a fight of two halves. And I feel like we saw that last night. We felt like Joseph Parker had a lot of success in the early rounds and then Joe Joyce was able to, to do what Joe Joyce does, you know, keep that, pressure, keep that pressure on in the second half of the fight and ultimately grind Joe down. What were your overall thoughts of the fight, the early rounds in particular for Joe? Yeah, I think the early rounds, Joseph Parker was in the fight. He probably won some rounds and you just felt... Like, you just felt like it, 
I had this nervous feeling of where's which way is the pendulum going to go? Is it going to tip Parker's way or Joyce? And as the fight went on, Joyce um, almost put the accelerator on, was unrelenting, and it, and it, it felt like a sense of drowning to some extent. And so... And, you know, how do you contend with that? And Joseph valiantly threw everything at it to the bitter end, like courageously so, and took punishment. And, you know, he's a personal friend of mine. And at points it was hard to watch, but he um, gave it a courageous effort right to the the bitter end. And Joe Joyce, um, what a mountain of a man. And, uh, you know, I hope he gets his world title shot soon, but I don't think he will. I think the... Uh, I think they'll be leaving it as long as possible because he's um, he's a tough challenge for anyone. He certainly is. Uh, it was kind of my next question, really. You've been with Joseph Parker through his whole career or the vast majority of his career, certainly the big, big nights. He's boxed Anthony Joshua. He's boxed Andy Ruiz, as you've just mentioned, Dillian White. He's now boxed Joe Joyce. Where would you put Joe Joyce in that bracket of opponents that Joe's boxed? I mean... I'm not trying to be controversial, but I think that could have been the toughest opponent Parker's had last night. I look at the Joyce last night, I think would have beaten all the names you just mentioned. So the Joyce last night was just a formidable, unrelenting tsunami wall of pressure and power and and impenetrable fortress. And and um, I think would be a handful for anyone, and and I and yeah, so right up there. You've mentioned uh, he's now the WBO interim champion, Joe Joyce, uh, somebody that Joe sh- uh, somebody that Joe Joyce shared the ring with in the WSB and the amateurs was Alexander Usyk. How do you feel like that fight would play out if he's indeed able to get that WBO title? Let's put politics to aside for one minute and assume that that fight does happen. Yeah, it's a, that would be a proper bull fight, Joyce being the bull and. Usyk being the matador if Usyk can use his ballet dancing skills and skate around Joyce for 12 rounds picking off shots he could win he could he could make it look easy but I think what last night it's hard easier said than done once you're under that pressure um trying to dance around to pick off maybe isn't as easy as it sounds but I, 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 I think Joyce could beat him but I think um, sorry I think Usyk could beat Joyce but I think Joyce showed how difficult it is to overcome him I mean, obviously I've, I've, I've seen Joseph Parker this, mor- uh, this morning this afternoon but what can you tell us and, uh, and our audience about Joe how is he obviously it was a hard fight last night he showed tremendous heart and courage to stay in there how's he feeling this morning philosophical like he's passed all the uh, neurological tests the doctor did and obviously he's a bit battered and bruised he's reflecting could I've done things differently being philosophical he's hungry to get back in the ring as soon as possible and so we're sort of saying hey let's let's get the the cut properly checked and make sure that we get a, a, a runway on when's the best time to come back but he's certainly not ready to give in like he's hungry to continue and have more big fights on the big stage um and he's jovial now and cracking a few jokes and um yeah reflecting you mentioned there he's keen to get back in the ring obviously i I had a brief conversation with him there what can you tell us about that he's keen in in his own words to return before the end of the year what are your thoughts on that he wants dillian white he still wants dillian white who's called everyone out since their 2018 fight, except Joseph Parker. Dillian's been mouthing off everyone's name, but hasn't mentioned Joseph. I think it's four years since that lucky win for Dillian. And not saying next, but whenever Dillian's ready, the the fight is there to be made. And obviously, Joseph's now the next fight's with boxer British Sky Sports. And I think Dillian has uh, some good relationships there. So maybe Dillian will, you know come forward who knows you've shown a willingness i mentioned it earlier in the interview to go from uh, sort of out of the frying pan and into the fire so to speak with anthony joshua to yeah. dillian white would he be willing to go straight into the dillian white fight or do you think maybe a fight in between there i know he'd be willing to he, he would be not saying that's what will happen but i'm sure if the terms are right he'd be willing to do that 
Uh, final one on, on all things heavyweight, um, unrelated to, to Joe. We've, we've obviously seen talk of, of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua, somebody that you know well as a, as a kind of former foe. And uh, Tyson Fury, who's, of course, very close to Joseph Parker. What do you make of it? You're always a straight shooter, Dave. It's one of the reasons why I think everybody loves to have you over here. You speak your mind. What do you make of the whole kind of back and forth, the public, the PR, the this, the that? Well, what do you think about that? I think that fight happens if both boxers want the fight. And why I say that, the money's agreed. I thought 60-40 is quite generous by Tyson Fury. And they've apparently agreed. So it comes down to, and Fury wants to fight, I can tell you that. So it comes down to, does Joshua really want the fight? Or are uh, te technicalities going to make used as excuses to run the time down? They run out of time. The fight doesn't happen because of technicalities. In which case, Joshua sh should have said at the outset that he's not ready for the fight. But he's kind of said he is, and now the pressure's on to, for them to step up. I think the Fury side have agreed to just about it, all the demands from the Joshua side, and so they'll, they'll be, it'll be hard to make excuses. If there is an excuse, it could be the broadcast arrangements. But if both guys really want the fight, that broadcast stuff can be sorted out because when there's a very big pie to be divided up, there's enough pie for everyone to eat. So the question is whether Joshua wants to fight is the question. You've been involved in, uh, I remember, as we mentioned uh, off camera earlier, the kind of the long protracted back and forth between yourself and Eddie Hearn at the, at the start with the Joshua Parker negotiations. Uh, these fights, they, they don't happen overnight. Do you see it happening yeah. in the time so, frame? So Joseph Parker versus Dillian White was an intercontinental pay-per-view boxing event at O2 Arena. It sold out. Um, it was an eight-figure turnover event, open book revenue share arrangement, and Eddie Hearn and I took made that deal in three days. So that's bullshit. If Fury and Joshua want the fight, everyone can get... The, the deal can be done in three days. It can be done on the back of an envelope. And I think if you see all those technicalities are because someone doesn't really want the fight. That's my opinion. If the fight does happen, how does that fight go? I think you'd have to say Fury. I mean, Joshua's a heavy-handed heavyweight and with luck will knock anyone out. So it'd be silly to say that he doesn't have a chance. I'd actually respect Joshua for doing it because it will be very un-Joshua-like to go from the frying pan into the fire. That would be something like what Joseph's done and it is risky. Like, people will be like, oh, don't do it. And it will be very, even advisors will be saying, don't do it, have some easy fights. And if Joshua stepped up and did it, he'd earn some respect from me anyway um, for t taking a risk. And, you know, if he, if he beat Fury, imagine that. What a fairy tale, straight back to the top. And go for the prize, take the risk. Uh, just going back to Joe there, uh, he's now had three fights under the stewardship of Andy Lee. He's, uh, he's an adopted Morecambe Bay man now. Uh, what have you made of his, his transition under Andy Lee? Were you impressed with his performance last night and, of course, the two Chisora fights? Yeah, I, I think, I think we, he's very happy in camp and very calm and gelled well. So there's no issues there. It's like family. Yes, we're happy with the adjustments and the changes. Last night... Um, obviously didn't go Joseph's way and there probably will be more learnings and changes from last night but um, that's something that uh, Andy and, and Joseph will review and work on in time. And just final one from me on uh, yourself and Joseph, uh, we, we mentioned here you've been together for an awful long time, promoter, manager, friend of course yeah. uh, reflect on your relationship with Joe the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows and just how far you've both come together Yeah, I mean Joseph was barely 20 or not quite when we signed him. Um, his family's dream was he'd become heavyweight world champion. We said we'd give it our best. We'll invest heavily, take risks, leave no stone unturned, do lots of shows every year, keep busy, put the foot on the accelerator. We did exactly that, and he did his bit. Trained in Vegas, away from the home and family. M massive sacrifice for four or five years in. He won the world title. Um and we we delivered and he delivered and there's a lot of trust there and uh we're still still here he's 30 years old he had a very rough brutal night last night but his heart's definitely still in it and um you know i would never push someone to 
do something they didn't want to do. And if anything, I'd be saying, hey, do you want to take some time? But no, Joseph's very clear that he's he's got another few years at this game and he loves it. I speak on behalf of all British boxing fans when I say that we you know, we always love it when the David Higgins and Joseph Parker Roadshow comes to town. So long may it continue. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we've caught up, David. We've both come a long way since that first yeah. interview we did in your, your very messy hotel room, by the way. <laughs> um, but always a pleasure catching up cool. with you. Thanks Thank very you. much for Cheers. speaking to ID Boxing. Appreciate your time. Thank you.